Hey guys, Wadoc Studios here, and today I wanted to go over um, the Lumen SM5 support situation with Unreal Engine 5.6. Uh, great news. Um, so the CVAR has officially been exposed to Unreal Engine 5.6, so I want to thank the guys over in the Lumen and Nanite feedback thread for pushing that through for the update. So a little bit of a backstory. Um, and 5.5 Lumen SM5 support was officially deprecated uh, in the default settings of the engine. Um, essentially, you had to use Vulkan or you know some non-D3D uh, method to get SM5 Lumen working. I outlined that it sh you know for Metal and Vulkan it seemed to still be supported, but the direct x path had been taken out so that meant that sm5 didn't work for dx11 nor dx12 um and then i made a commit to the engine that would put it back but it was essentially reverting a change that they didn't want exposed by default i think they intended on moving it to a cvar so that they could focus on i guess deprecation in the future and the fact that um, many games like fortnite which is derived from unreal engine uh, do not support DX11 or SM5 versions of Lumen, which would be software ray traced only versions of Lumi, Lumen. Um, so, um, through a lot of like communication, etc., um, basically, you know, a couple of commits, different people trying to approach this from different uh, angles, um, we were able to get it back through a PR. Um, it didn't go public, but it's there if you want to pull it for 5.5 to get SM5 uh, DX11 software supported Lumen back. Um, but then in 5.6, I can show you an example. Um, all you really need to do, and this CVAR has to be set before you actually load the game up. So it isn't something that can take place at runtime. It needs to be in your default engine INI, and you need to have this r.lumen supported SM5 equals one. Um, and then once that is in your project uh, default engine INI, then when you launch the project, you can change your RHI to DirectX 11, which is SM5 by default. Um, and you can still get uh, software ray traced Lumen. So um, if we come into my project settings here, you'll see that my RHI is set to DX11. And you'll see that my SM5 is set to DX11 um, because DX12 SM6 support is only available for DX12. So like if we was to type in SM6, you'll see that it is a DX uh, D 3D12 targeted shader platform. So um, yeah, we are in DirectX 11. And if I hit play, you will see that um, Lumen is indeed impacting the scene here. Uh, again, this is software ray traced Lumen. Um, and uh, this kind of tacks on to the, you know, a talk that I've done on YouTube uh, that talks about performance and going back to DirectX 11 or even going as far back to, you know, forward rendering. Um, and you could essentially even force the mobile pipeline into DirectX and get even cheaper. But I will say that like with full blown Lumen support and the third rendering on D, uh, DirectX 11, um, we can go to stat FPS here and you can see I'm capped out at 120 frames. I'm on a 2080 Ti by the way, just if anyone's curious. Um, and we'll just go ahead and set my max frame rate up to something atrocious. And you can see I'm getting pretty good performance here in the base uh, third person template. Um, you know, 150 so frames without recording on OBS Studio, I'm getting around 175, I think on average. Um, and that's at full res without any upscaling uh, with TAA. Um, so if I was to change my, um, and so, I mean, essentially this is, 
DX11 running um, with Lumen, but everything else would essentially be like what Unreal Engine 4 would support. Um, so if we go to the TAA and we, and we bump this temporal up to TSR, it's going to be much more expensive. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind that TSR does come with a little bit of a cost. Um, if you're at 100% on a 1080p screen, it's almost not worth the TSR cost um, because you're 100%, right? Now, if you were aiming to allow people to set their screen percentage to something much smaller, um, like switching over into performance mode or something, then that's where you would see your gains. Um, so if, you know, I wanted to go to uh, scalability and we could drag this screen percentage down to say like performance or balance, that's where we would start getting that, you know, upscaler doing most of the work and we're back up to 190 frames. Uh, granted, <coughs> what, a, <coughs> what a little bit of, excuse me, I'm sorry, what a little bit of um, artifacting that comes from the upscaler. So it won't be quite as sharp as TAA, especially if you customize your TAA settings um, to kind of get rid of a, a little bit of that temporal smear. But yeah, um, balance seems to be pretty good. Um, if you do want to rely on the upscaler uh, still in DirectX 11, um, it's, you know, quality and, and balance does seem to be pretty decent performance wise. It gets you over that 120 frame mark, um, and reduces the artifacting quite a bit and still produces a pretty good, pretty good, uh, visual fidelity. Um, and this is, you know, allowing you to run a DX 11 where you don't have to worry so much about PSO caching. Um, you know, uh, it, it doesn't handle PSOs the same way that DX12 does. So if you're in a um, environment where you don't have hardware ray traced um, support, um, say pixel streaming in the cloud, um, say you want to go to the Steam Deck, but you still want to have some, some GI and you want it to run fairly well, and you want to reduce that memory footprint uh, that that is accompanied with SM6 and DX12, then this may be an option for you. Um, I can confirm that the Steam Deck seems to be handling DirectX 11 with Lumen enabled. As long as you're you're very mindful of you know how many draws you have and what your shader complexity is, um, this seems to be running really well. So that's the update on the status for SM5 Lumen software ray trace Lumen support and in Unreal Engine 5.6. Um, yeah, go forth, make awesome stuff. Consider smacking that like and subscribe button. And if you like things like this, also consider joining the Wild Ox Studios YouTube family and the Discord. We have a ton of people over there that are very interested in Unreal Engine development and uh, more than willing to help out with questions like these. Until next time, toodles.